No matter what brand camera you're using, you'll only need these two lenses to do landscape photography with. Find out what they are next. When it comes to landscape photography, more often than not, photographers have to travel, hike, camp, or go on long road trips for the love of their art. After years of traveling the world and packing so many lenses, I finally narrowed it down to just two that I like to take with me now when doing landscape photography. Today, I'll be sharing those lenses with you and discussing the reasons why I like to use them. When I first began traveling the world regularly back in 2010, I used to pack literally every lens I owned into my camera bag, then go to the airport and pay extra for carry-on baggage. To top that off, by the end of a long day's landscape photography, my legs and back would be breaking from lugging a 15 plus kilo camera bag around everywhere. And when I finally got back home from my trip, I'd realize, well, I didn't even use those lenses or I didn't even use that lens. After a lot of trial and error, I ended up using just these two lenses that you see in front of me. And that is the Nikon 16 to 35 F4 VR lens, as well as the Nikon AFS 80 to 400 F4.5 to 5.6 lens. Now these are Nikon F mount lenses, but stick around because I'll be giving you my equivalent lenses I'd be theoretically using if I owned either the Canon or Sony mirrorless full frame cameras. With the 16 to 35 millimeter lens, more often than not, I use that on a tripod. However, with the Nikon 80 to 400 millimeter lens, there are quite a number of times I go handheld because surprisingly enough, you think landscape photography would be pretty serene, but sometimes you have to move very quickly because there could be things like streams of light coming through the clouds and heading down onto the landscape. And that may only last a few seconds. Other times there are things going on so much around you like I had at Bellandine in Queensland, Australia. So it was literally a landscape photography turkey shoot where I was firing off shots getting these different patterns of mist and cloud as it wove amongst the mountains and through the trees. So why not use things like prime lenses? They're lighter and sharper. Well, the reason for that, I need the flexibility and focal length of the zoom lenses because sometimes I can't use my feet to reposition myself and the camera. I might be stuck at a stream or a mountain ledge or canyon. Sometimes I just need to reframe my shot to finish off that composition I'm going for by framing out an annoying tree branch or rock. I don't want to have to crop in using a prime lens as I want to maximize the amount of megapixels my camera has, ensuring quality large prints. I also use these lenses because I found I literally never shot landscape shots in that mid focal range around say 35 to 70 millimeters. I was either wide at 16 to 24, or I was using a telephoto lens to pick out a section of the landscape. Clouds, mist, mountaintops, or streams of light hitting on the side of a mountain. A very small detail I should mention as well, both of these lenses share the same filter thread size of 77 millimeters. So I can easily share filters on the two of them without having different filter adapter ring sizes. Now for the equivalent lenses, if I owned either the Sony or Canon mirrorless full frame cameras. And please remember, this is what would suit me and my type of photography that I do. If I own something like the Sony A7R 3 or A7R 4 then I'd be carrying with me something like the Sony 16 to 35 f 2.8 G Master lens, as well as the Sony 100 to 400 4.5 to 5.6 G Master telephoto lens. Last year while testing the Sony A1, I had the opportunity to use both these lenses and I was super impressed with them. So incredibly sharp. I'm sure Sony users would agree, although they are a bit expensive, the image quality out of these lenses is first rate. 
Now, yes, there are alternative lenses for those cameras as well. You've also got that fantastic range from Tamron and Sigma. Tamron have the 70 to 28 f2.8 as well as the 28 to 75 f2.8. And Sigma also have that fantastic 100 to 400 millimeter lens. If I own something like the Canon R5 or R6, then I'd be carrying the Canon RF 14 to 35 f4 lens and the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter f4.5 to 7.1 lens. Now this would be closely, and I'm talking like flip a coin here, with the Canon RF 70 to 200 f4 lens, just for its compact size and weight factor when you're going out hiking. So I use these two lenses teamed with my Nikon D850. However, when I've got the Z7 camera, I normally use my 14 to 30 millimeter f4 Z lens, and then I use the FDZ2 adapter to put on the 80 to 400 millimeter lens. I'm sure there are some photographers out there that have their own unique lenses. They like to use for landscape photography. And if you're getting great results, then that's fantastic. But as I said, these are the lenses that suit my type of photography I like to do. But I would like to hear about your lenses that you like to use the most for doing landscape photography. And by all means, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. By all means, feel free to subscribe to my channel. As I always say, never stop creating, and I'll see you next time.